everyone. Today we're starting on the module called uh, The World Communicates. We'll be looking in this module about uh, how people communicate with each other, and we'll be looking in particular at uh, methods of communication involving waves. And so to start with, we'll be looking at the section Waves and Energy. We'll be talking about what a wave is, how it works, and different kinds of waves. Our first section is just about waves and energy transfer. We're we'll doing things like basic definitions and looking at what exactly a wave is. So, as we know, communication is very, very, very important to us human beings. The fact that it was developed a few thousand years ago made it possible to communicate uh, ideas and uh, made it possible to come up with uh, more complex ideas. And with those complex ideas, they could be uh, implemented in the real world thanks to the communication between the people. And so it used to be that if you wanted to send a message a very long distance, it would take a long time. You would have to give it to a messenger and they would take the message and go over to the recipient and deliver it. These days, uh, we don't really need to wait so long for communication. Today, we use uh, electromagnetic waves in order to communicate with each other. And so these waves travel so quickly that you don't even notice the delay uh, for the travel time. It means that if we use a mobile phone, we can speak with someone on the other side of the world and notice hardly any delay in the uh, messages travel. And so waves are also responsible for other forms of communication. The main one that we'll be looking at in the module is electromagnetic communication. But the other waves are quite important as well. So I've, I've mentioned waves quite a lot now, so we should probably get on to defining them. There are many different kinds of waves. Uh, there are obvious waves, like as we can see in this picture here, waves in water, which you've probably heard of. And it, as it turns out, light is a form of wave as well. And that one's not immediately obvious. So right away we can see that there is more than one different sort of wave and they have different properties. So given they're so different, how can we find a definition that covers all different types of wave? Well, it turns out that all waves, regardless of what sort of wave they are, are ways of transferring energy without transferring matter. Right? So we're getting energy across, which might be a message, or some sort of energy pulse, and we're not uh, having to move any objects to transfer that energy. So if we look at a water wave, for example, we look at it uh, passing across a few things floating on top, we'll notice that most of the time the things on top don't actually move in the same direction as the wave, they just bob up and down as the wave goes underneath. If a wave is breaking, uh, as a, a surfer might catch, then it will be a little different. But if we look at objects floating on top of the water, like these ducks, we can see that they'll move up and down. They'll bob on top of the water as the wave goes past, instead of being carried off by the wave. And so the water wave is not causing the water particles to move in the same direction as the wave it is simply causing them to move up and down as the wave passes. Right? Let's look at another example. If we look at a piece of string or a rope tied to a wall, then we can sort of flick one end to make a pulse travel down the string. Right? So shaking the string at one end will cause the string at the other end to also shake in the same direction. And in this case, it's obvious that the string isn't moving back or forth, right? If we send a pulse down, then we don't have to get the entire string moving in that direction to carry the pulse. All we need is that little disturbance in the string to propagate through the string. So in this case, we're once again transferring energy without transferring matter. If we look at light, 
this is a type of wave that travels through physical space, right? It doesn't have water or string to travel through. If you could take hold of uh, a little charged particle, for example an electron, at one of the room and wiggle it around a lot, then you would create electromagnetic waves, right? This means that if you were to look at a similar charged particle on the opposite side of the room, it would behave in the same way as the particle that you originally jiggled. It's as if you were holding a string at one end of the room and shaking it up and down. It causes the other end of the string to also shake up and down. Except instead of ropes propagating through the wave, uh, propagating through the string rather, they're propagating through empty space. So electromagnetic waves turn out to be the fastest type of wave. There is no wave that goes more quickly than the wave between two charged particles jiggling. So it turns out that, uh, as we know, we can change some forms of energy into other forms of energy. And this is true for the energy carried by waves as well. So why is this important? Well, modern communications often use electrical energy, right? We have lots of electrical appliances, like mobile phones and uh, satellite communication and instant messaging. And these all need to use electrical energy in order to carry messages, right? So if we can transform things to and from electrical energy, that means that we can use electri uh, electrical waves to transmit messages. So uh, we can, once it's being transmitted as electrical energy, we can transform that back to a form of energy that we can understand, like sound energy, if we're talking over a telephone. So let's take a look at the uh, various energy transformations that happen when we talk on a mobile phone. We start off with sound energy when we're talking into the mobile phone, and the mobile phone will very quickly use its microphone to transform this into electrical energy. With me so far? Okay, now we take this electrical energy and we transform it into an electromagnetic wave, right? The type of electromagnetic wave is called a radio wave. And so once it's uh, a radio wave, we can actually beam that to uh, a mobile phone tower and that will send it up to a satellite in the same form. The satellite will decode part of this and then send it back down, still as a radio wave, into the destination mobile phone, right? And that'll transform it back into electrical energy once it's inside the phone. Of course, we can't hear electrical energy. So what we need is a speaker on the receiving phone in order to transform the electrical energy into, that's right, sound energy. And once it's back in the form of sound energy, the recipient can receive the message that the sender sent. So in this case, we have a number of different transformations of energy just to transmit a single message. But because one of the transformations turns it into radio waves, we can transmit that message extremely fast and extremely long distances. So it turns out that all types of non-electromagnetic wave require uh, particles interacting with each other in order for them to propagate, right? So if we have particles, then all those particles acting together must form some sort of substance, right? So the particles might be molecules or atoms or something, but whatever they are, they're making up something bigger. And we call that bigger thing the medium. If we think of sound waves, traveling through air, then air is the medium. It's the, it's the particles in the air that let the sound wave travel. So some media, which is of course the plural of medium, that we see carrying waves might be the air, or water, or even a string, if we're doing a science experiment to demonstrate waves. Or if we're playing a musical instrument that matter. Now when an object vibrates in a medium, it causes a disturbance. We can see that in this series of diagrams over here. A cork has been dropped into some water and caused a disturbance 
in the water, right? Now, that disturbance will actually travel away from the object. We can see that the vibrations caused by this cork are spreading outwards. As they do this, they're taking energy from the cork's vibration and carrying it away from the cork, right? And that means that we have energy being transferred without matter being transferred, hence a wave. So if we look at, once again, our example of a falling cork, it will produce ripples in the water. So these ripples are a form of wave. If we look at uh, the water in the ripple itself, uh, if we could look at the uh, atomic scale and look at the water molecules, we would notice them only moving up and down as the ripple passed, without actually moving in the same direction as the ripple. Now most waves turn out to arise from uh, vibrations, right? So, uh, as particles in the medium vibrate, they cause the particle next to them vibrate. So, once again, an easy way to look at this would be a string. If we see one part of the string start moving up, then it will pull the next part of the string up with it. As it moves back down, the next part of the string will move back down as well. So as the vibration spreads out, the wave propagates through the medium. Uh, propagation is what we call it when waves are traveling uh, through a medium or through empty space. Now, waves can occur in different numbers of dimensions. Right? We can look at waves in one dimension, which are the easiest to examine. We can look at waves in two dimensions, or even in three dimensions. And all of these waves will look a bit different. A wave in one dimension might be a wave on a string, for example, in a violin. A wave in two dimensions might be ripples on a pond. We can see that they don't just spread out in one direction, they spread out all across the surface of the pond, right? So that means that they form a circle away from the original disturbance. So if a two-dimensional wave looks like a circle, then what might a three-dimensional wave look like? Well, you've guessed it, a sphere. So if we look at something emitting sound or light, like the sun, the light will spread out in three different directions. Make sense? Sound works as well. If, we, if something makes a noise, then no matter where we're standing around it, we'll hear that noise. So that means that the wave is spreading out in all different directions. And so it's a three-dimensional wave. All right, so now that we've got some idea of what waves are and what some different sort of waves might look like, let's go on to some questions. Question one. Which of the following is an example of a wave? We have a few options, a ball being thrown across a park, air being blown by a fan, ripples spreading out on a pond, or a spring being stretched out and held in place. Now what's the definition of a wave? It's energy that travels without the medium traveling, right? So it's transferal of energy without transferal of matter. So let's go through our options. A says a ball being thrown across a park. Now in that case, we are indeed transferring energy. We're taking the kinetic energy of the ball at one point and putting the kinetic energy at another point. The problem is we're moving the ball at the same time. The ball is what's carrying the energy. And so in order to move the kinetic energy of the ball, we also need to move the ball itself. Therefore, it's not a wave. All right, how about air being blown by a fan? Uh, in this case, we once again have transfer, transferal of energy. We'll get the energy of the air near the fan moving out to far away from the fan. But in this case, once again, it's moving because the air is moving. So in this case, we're having transferal of energy and transferal of matter. So this is not a wave. D reads a spring being stretched out and held in place. It turns out that a spring, or even a stretched spring, is a good medium through which waves can travel, right? In particular, there'll be one-dimensional waves traveling in the same direction as the spring. 
But at the moment, it's only stretched out and it's being held in place. So that means that energy isn't actually moving through the spring and it's not a wave. Our last option is C, ripple spreading through a pond. Now in this case, we have a disturbance in the water, the ripples, and they're moving, so they, they're carrying energy. But if we look at the water molecules in the pond, they're not actually moving in the same direction as the ripples. They're just bobbing up and down. So in this case, C is a wave because it's a way of transferring energy without transferring matter. Question two, what is the medium of each wave? A sound wave traveling across a room. So what particles are carrying the vibrations of a sound wave? Well, it turns out that it's the air. So air is the medium for the sound wave. This is why in space, for example, sample, no one can hear you scream. Part B, what is the medium of ripples spreading out in a pond? So in this case, uh, we're not spreading through air, we're spreading through water. So our answer here is water for the medium. Finally, what is the medium of a Mexican wave at a sports game, for example? Now it turns out that a Mexican wave isn't really a proper wave because we're not carrying energy through the crowd. However, we are still seeing repeated vibrations, right? Or repeated people raising their hands. And so in this case, the medium through which a Mexican wave travels would be the people who are putting their hands up. Question three, in how many dimensions do the following waves travel? Part A, the light from a candle. Now, when we light a candle, can we see it from only one direction? Or can we see it from just a single plane? Or can we see it from all directions? The answer, of course, is that we can see the light from every single direction. And therefore, it's a three-dimensional wave. Part B, how about a wave traveling along a stretched out spring? Now, in this case, the wave can only travel in one direction, along the spring. And so, it's a one-dimensional wave. Finally, what about a shock wave from an explosion? In this case, just like for part A, we can feel the shock wave from any direction, whether we're uh, in one direction or another direction or even above it. So, if it spreads out in all directions, it must be a three-dimensional wave. Question four, musical instruments provide, uh, produce sound waves by causing air to vibrate. Now, what is the source of the vibrations in a drum? Now, drums, of course, are instruments that must be struck in order to produce vibrations. When we strike a drum, that means that the skin on the top of the drum starts vibrating, and this is what spreads the sound, or what produces the sound. So in this case, it's the vibrating skin of the drum which produces sound waves. Part B, what produces the vibrations in a violin? Now a violin is a stringed instrument and it turns out the strings vibrating is what causes the sound waves. So in this case, the strings on the violin vibrate when they are plucked or bowed by the musician. And I can see the lights blinking and I'm not sure that I'm going to get through all the questions. So, C, what is the source of the vibrations in a clarinet? Now a clarinet is a woodwind instrument, and so as such there's a column of air inside the uh, instrument which is uh, vibrating, and that's what's producing the sound waves. So what causes the column of air to vibrate? Well it turns out that in a clarinet we have a reed in the mouthpiece when the musician blows onto the reed, that reed will vibrate. So our answer here is that the reed of the clarinet vibrates when a musician blows into the instrument, and that is the source of the vibrations. This is why if the reed of a clarinet breaks, it'll stop working. Finally, what is the source of the vibrations of a trumpet? Now it turns out that a trumpet, being a brass instrument, does not have a reed. Uh, instead, it's got a special mouthpiece into which the musician has to vibrate their lips, sort of make a 
noise, right? When they do this into the mouthpiece, it will vibrate the air inside the instrument and that will be amplified through the trumpet and coming out of the end will produce a sound. So in this case, the source of the vibrations uh, is not a reed or a string or a vibrating skin, but the lips of the musician. Question 5. It is possible to transform the energy carried by waves into different forms of energy. So why is this useful? Well, we know that transforming different sorts of energy is useful because we can turn, you know, uh, chemical energy from coal into heat energy of water into electrical energy. And that's how we uh, power a generator. But for waves, it might not immediately be so obvious. It turns out that the main uh, advantage of being able to transform the energy in waves is communication, right? Remember the transformations that we went through with the mobile phone? So it's easier to transmit some forms of energy than other forms of energy, right? Electrical energy is very easy to transmit, whereas sound energy is a little bit harder because it spreads out and it's difficult to funnel it in just one direction. So when the energy of a sound wave, for example, is transformed into electrical energy, we can take that electrical energy and transmit it over long distances without losing much energy, right? Once it's at the destination, we can once again transform the energy back into sound energy. So this means that the waves that we started off with have been transformed into different waves and then transformed back to sound waves. And so because we can transform the energy into different forms, we're able to transmit messages carried by waves much more quickly and efficiently. All right, so that's the end of the questions. In this section, we've gone over what waves are, a bit about how they work, and the advantages of transforming them into different waves. In the next section, we'll be looking at different types of waves in more detail. Mm -hmm.